Hey guys, it's Mattpedia, and today we're going to talk about the very exciting topic of car insurance. So I'm going to try and make it as interesting as, as I can, but this is going to be an informational video for all the people um, that are turning into adults and are suddenly needing to get car insurance and don't know why they need it, what it is, what it's for, what's covered, and general things to know. So let's just get right into it so this can be a nice, concise video. We hope so car insurance exists as a means to cover your ass in case you are in an accident it covers your ass on two fronts if you cause the accident the other people's whose cars you damaged houses you damaged the fire hydrant in the city or the sign that you might have damaged the insurance pays that on your behalf up to a limit and it also pays for the people's medical bills or whatever they might have wrong with them if you break someone's neck in a car accident or whatever it pays for that it also pays to recover replace or repair your car in the event of an accident as well the person that causes the accident or is at fault is the one whose insurance will be paid out first so if I rear end you my insurance pays for my car and for your car and for your medical bills your insurance does not need to be involved at all because I was the problem. You would only call your insurance company if my insurance company or myself aren't cooperating or in the event of a hit and run. But you always let the um, at-fault party do the insurance stuff first. And the reason why having the insurance to cover you matters is because no one plans to get into an accident, obviously. Safe drivers get into accidents every day because, hell, I was just coming home from the gym and I was sweaty and it fogged up the windows inside my car and I completely didn't see a guy and I almost pulled out in front of him. I'm a good driver most of the time. Most people are decent drivers, but every once in a while it only takes a fraction of a second to make a mistake. So that's what insurance is for. No one intends to get into an accident. So if you say like, oh, I'll just drive safer and I won't need insurance, that's stupid and you're lying to yourself. Anyways, insurance is there because you can't afford, most people can't just go and pay cash for a brand new car, right? Like, if you needed to get a new car tomorrow to get to work, could you just shell out $20,000, $30,000, $40,000 for a new car? No, I don't think so. That's what insurance is for. If your car is destroyed, damaged, stolen, you file a claim and the insurance will pay for the new car or pay to get your car back or pay to have it repaired on your behalf and then you can hopefully get back to life without a huge hiccup in your daily routine. It also is required by state law. In Wisconsin, you must have a certain minimum of insurance to cover for things happening. I will go over that shortly. Also, if you rent, loan, or lease a car, you will need to have insurance too to protect the bank or the whoever's lending you the money. If I give you $40,000 to go buy a car and you give me payments every month of $1,000, whose car is it? It's my car. I bought it with my $40,000. I gave you $40,000. You bought the car with the money I lent to you. And then you gave me a little bit back. Until you give me my $40,000 back, that's my car. I want you to have insurance on that car in case something happens. Because if you don't have insurance on that car, and we don't have a contract or anything that stipulates that, if you wreck the car that you bought for yourself with my money, I lost that money. Because now you have no reason to keep paying me. The car is gone. You can just tell me to piss off, and I can't take the car back because it's not there anymore. I can try and sue you for the money back, but that's going to take a long time and it's going to be a lot of hassle. That's why lenders make you have insurance because you're driving their car around until you pay it off, then they give you the deed to the car, and then it's your car. It's not your car until it's paid off, and you're lying to yourself if you think otherwise. If you don't have the title in hand, it ain't your car. So typical coverages, it'll be three numbers. It'll be like a number, slash, number, slash, number. So the state minimums in Wisconsin is 25, 50, 10. So these are all in thousands. So the state minimums that you must have to drive legally on the road is $25,000, $50,000, $10,000. That first number is the number of dollars that will be paid out to a single person in the event of an accident that you cause to them. So if it's me and my car and you rear end me and I break my neck, your insurance will pay up to $25,000 for my neck repair. Spoiler, it's going to cost a shitload more than that. That's why state minimums aren't good. 
The second number, 50,000, is going to be the total amount that they will pay for every single person in that car. So if it's me and my fiance in the car and you rear end us both and we both need neck surgery, it'll pay up to $25,000 for my neck surgery and it'll pay up to $25,000 for her neck surgery. That's the first number. And total, it will pay $50,000 for everyone in the car. So if there's a third person in the car that also needs a $25,000 neck surgery, they're not getting it. That's it. You hit the limit on the first two people. It would probably divide it more evenly so that all three of us would have to sue you personally. But the point is you're left on the hook for th hundreds of thousands of dollars. And chances are you don't just walk around with that kind of money to pay it off. This is why, again, the state minimums don't help you at all. Because as you've seen in the example, neck surgery for one person is probably going to be $100,000, like at least. Then on top of that, you're going to have to pay for my pain and suffering for the rest of my life because it hurts when I do this. I can't lift weights anymore because my neck was broken. I can't make money at my job because maybe I was a waiter and I had to do this and that hurts my neck too much. All of these things, I can bill you forever until I die and you have to pay me because you hit me and broke my neck in a car accident and this, your insurance wasn't high enough to cover for all these things that are happening to me now because of your bad driving. And the final number, that 10, is for property damage. The property damage covers for my car Maybe you hit a tree. Uh, maybe you hit me and I hit a fire hydrant also. All of those things extended from you hitting me, that's all on your property damage. So your little measly $10,000 state minimum has to replace all of my car that's damaged, any street sign, fire hydrant, light post, telephone pole, electric line that I hit, and anything else property-wise that's not yours that's broken. That is not going to be enough. Uh, replacing just a street light is about $12,000. So keep that in mind. Even the state minimum of $10,000 is not going to cover you for the most minor thing that you can hit. If you hit one of those guardrail things on the highway, it might cover that. But otherwise, you're going to be paying out of pocket for a long time. You should have, like I've shown in the example, hopefully you get it now, you need to have in the hundreds of thousands of dollars of coverage. A good safe amount, not considering an umbrella policy, which I'll make in a later video, would be like $250,000, $500,000, $100,000. That way, if you hit someone and severely damage them, you'll be covered for a good amount of that. If you hit a car with multiple people in it, you're covered up to half a million dollars, and it's got $100,000 in property damage. So even if you wreck someone's BMW, you'll probably be okay. Now, if you cause a multi-car pileup, that's another story, but it's still going to take you a lot further than that $10,000 would. If you can't or don't want to do 250, 500, 100, you could do something like 100, I think it's one, it's either 100 or 125, and then 250, 100, or something like that. But you should have a higher amount than the state minimums by quite a, quite a large margin to cover yourself for that. Additionally, in those coverages, there's something called underinsured motorist coverage and uninsured motorist coverages. This is for, if you hit me and break my neck, my underinsured motorist coverage covers me for that up to the amount that I've selected because you didn't take the responsibility and have enough on your end. So when you can't pay me for my neck surgery, someone has to pay. It'll probably be me and they'll have to sue you for it. My insurance company will help me out with that underinsured motorist. If you're in a hit and run or the driver has no insurance at all, that's where the uninsured motorist comes in because we either don't know who did it or they have nothing. So before we get into additional features, your insurance policy is going to be the amount that you'll have to pay is based on the amount of coverage that you select. It's also based on your driving record, how often you make claims, where you live, and a few other things because the insurance company isn't stupid. They're like, like you're paying them to cover you in the event of an emergency. And they're saying, okay, if something happens, we will step in and take care of it. The amount of risk that we're taking on based on your driving habits, your location, how often you claim stuff, we're going to need about this much a month or this much for a term. A term can be six months or a year. There's maybe some other variants depending on the company, but typically a term is going to be six months. That's what most people do. So if you live in a part of town where cars are broken into all the time and stolen all the time, your rates are going to be higher than someone who lives like a county over. If you live in deer country and ev there's just so many deer up there, it's going to be higher. If you make a claim every time you get a door ding, 
your rates are going to be higher because the insurance company has to factor in that you're going to be making claims all the freaking time for stupid stuff. You only should be making claims when it's really an emergency. In addition to the liability coverages that we discussed, the you know, 250, 500, 100, there's another portion of the insurance called comprehensive, which are the things that you can't control. Comprehensive is all the unlucky shit that happens in your life. If a tornado scoops up your car and throws it into the next county, that's a comprehensive claim. If lightning strikes your car and it bursts into flame, that's comprehensive. If you're driving and a rock kicks up and breaks your windshield, that's comprehensive. If you hit a deer, that's comprehensive. Um, typically, it's fire, theft, windows breaking from a rock or frost or whatever, um, vandalism, theft, hitting a deer or another animal, um, just anything that you really can't control. There are some other ones in there, but I, you know, that's the, the main ones that come to mind. Collision is if it's your fault and you hit someone else, and then you can elect a certain amount called a deductible. A deductible is the amount of money that they deduct from the payout to you after there's a claim. Typically, you can get a $0 deductible, $250, $500, $1,000, or $2,000. You should have a deductible that is an amount of money that you can have at any time to cover your ass. So I know that I can get probably $1,000 in an emergency. I can bag, borrow, steal, you know, work a double shift, whatever. I can get $1,000. Maybe I'll put my collision deductible at $1,000 because if I cause an accident, any payout to repair my car will be the amount of damages I need minus $1,000, and that's my fault, so I get it. Personally, I have a $0 deductible on comprehensive things because I can't control hitting a deer. I can't control someone stealing my car. I can't control driving down the street and a rock kicks up and breaks my glass. So I would rather pay monthly a little bit through my rates being higher for better coverage than to have to shell out $500 at random in if my window if my windshield breaks suddenly without warning on the other side i can more so control whether or not i get into an accident and am at fault if i just pay attention and drive safer so there are things i can actively do to try to minimize my chance of being in an accident so my chance of having to do a collision coverage payout is a little bit lower if i just take that on myself so i will have less coverage by having a higher deductible if you have any doubts, ask your own insurance agent. If they're a good agent, they'll be happy to explain to you what they're taking money from you every month for. For optional coverages, a lot of the main auto insurance places will give you the same kind of suite of options. So there is rental reimbursement. If your car is stolen, damaged, whatever, and you can't use it, this extra add-on also will pay for all or some of your rental costs for a rental car, which is nice because then it's something else that you already can't drive your car. You're already dealing with all of that. Now you can just have the insurance handle whatever rental car you get put in. And you don't have to stress every day about how much you're paying to have this rental car. When my car was stolen years ago, I had rental reimbursement apparently on my parents' policy. And it was very nice because I drove a very nice car that was much nicer <laughs> than the one that was actually stolen from me for like four weeks while everything got worked out and I didn't have to pay any of it and it was really great. So I will always have rental reimbursement. If you're getting your brakes changed and you just have your car in the shop for a day, that is not covered by rental reimbursement. Rental reimbursement is only if something is wrong with your car that happened suddenly. It's not, oh shoot, I need to get my brakes fixed on Tuesday. Hey, insurance, please pay for me to have a rental car. That's not how that works. Emergency roadside service or, you know, AAA package or everyone's got their own, like, Gold Star, or road towing, whatever. They'll have, you can get your keys, take, you can get your doors unlocked if you lock your keys in the car. They can deliver gas. They can tow you. A whole a bunch of options. They vary in what kind of stipulations they have for insurance company to insurance company. So make sure you check the details on that. Some are worth getting. Some are not as good. Some limit how, how many times a year you can get towed or the total miles. Um, for some of them, it's just better to have AAA. So look into it and make your own like, you know, decision there. If you have a, a like the gold AAA membership that's like 100 bucks a year, that might be better than having some of these auto insurance things. You also will need to look at if the rental reimbursement and the, like the AAA package are per car or for the whole account. Because if it's like $50 for the year for the AAA package, but it's per car and you have four cars, 
it's probably going to be cheaper just to do the $100 a year, like tri AAA gold star thing through AAA. So keep that in mind, look into it. The big one that you want to think about is gap coverage. So we talked about how the when people loan you money for a car, it's their car. We talked about, well, we haven't talked about yet, but like cars depreciate. The old adage of the car depreciating by so much as soon as you drive it off the lot is true. Um, I guess my first major piece of advice is don't buy a new freaking car. That being said, if you do buy a new freaking car, you may need gap coverage. So let's say the new, I love those Ford, uh, what the hell are they called? I love the new Ford Raptor. So let's say I go buy a new Ford Raptor right off the showroom floor. I don't know what it costs. Let's just say it's 50 grand. I get my $50,000 $50, loan from Summit. I drive it off the lot and I hit someone at the stoplight. My car went from a $50,000 new car to a $42,000 used car. It, my car is totaled. Let's just say the Raptor is crushed. I got hit by a semi. It's gone. The insurance company is going to get me the amount of money that a 20, 2020 used Ford Raptor is worth because it's used. I drove it. They're not going to give me 50 grand. The credit union I borrowed the money from wants that 50 grand because that's what they gave me. I don't have 50 grand. I borrowed it. The insurance company is only going to give me 42. There is a gap of $8,000 there that I don't have. The insurance company isn't going to give me and the credit union wants. That gap coverage is what gap coverage is. They, they cover you in case something like that happens. It's worth it. You can usually take it off your policy at any time. You pretty much, want, you have to get it right when you get the car. You can't like get into an accident and then add gap coverage. No insurance lets you add shit after you've already screwed everything up. So don't try and play games. Get it before you need it. Be prepared. We're adults now. And then after you have the car for a year or two, then you can take gap coverage off because the amount that you'll get back from the car if you if it's totaled or stolen from the insurance company is going to be roughly equal to what a used model of that car is for that year finally. Usually, you know, it's like two to three years before it starts to get closer to where it's not awful and you're owing thousands and thousands of dollars. Each one will be, you know, each car differs a little bit, so keep that in mind. You can always blue book your car and see what it's worth currently and figure out if you want to keep gap or not. It's generally not that expensive, so you should just have it. Do not, do not get gap coverage from the car dealership. The car dealership makes no money on selling a car. Car dealerships make money on the loan, the lease, and all the extra shit, tax, title, licensing, selling gap coverage, selling warranties, whatever. Gap coverage at the car lot might be 800 to thousand dollars. Gap coverage from an insurance company is going to be a hundred or less. So just think wisely. Talk to your insurance agent. They would love to have your business all in one. You would love to have all of your policies all in one. So if your car is wrecked, you make one phone call to one agency. You don't have to call these people and then call these people and then call the warranty. One phone call. That's all. Why do we need car insurance? Well, we talked about it a little bit. The liability, if you get into an accident and if you kill someone, it's automatically in Wisconsin wrongful death. If you kill an adult, automatic $250,000, boom, right there. If, the minor, if there's a minor in the car, automatic $400,000 if they're killed by your negligence. If you look back to our example, that's going to take almost all of your car insurance money right there. So we don't want to kill anyone in a car accident. But if we do, you're screwed if you have a bad policy. We had a client that rear-ended someone. He was the driver that was our insured, was like 22. Rear-ended someone, broke their spine, had a shitty policy. That person lived, unfortunately, for the insured, which is dark. But a lot of the time, it's a lot less costly if they just die and you pay the 250 right away. If they live, then you have back surgery after back surgery after back surgery, rehab, PT, pain and suffering, lost wages, all of this. That client of ours that was 22, his life is ruined now. He didn't have good insurance, didn't have an umbrella policy, had really low amounts. He can't even begin to pay the money that he's going to be on the hook for for the rest of his life. If you thought student loans were bad, at least you got something out of this. This dude just, 
you know, blew a stoplight at 22, not paying attention, changing the radio, whatever he was doing. Now he's fucked forever because he didn't have a good insurance policy. I'm not trying to scare you, but these things happen every single day. It sounds like insurance companies and agents and whatever are always trying to scare you, but it's because they see this stuff every day. We get, we got, I don't work there anymore. I'm unemployed, but whatever. We saw claims every day for just the wildest shit that you would never imagine. And every day we're like, hey, guess what happened down at whatever. And it just, it's insane. You would never think things like this are going on, but they're happening all the time. So you need to be prepared. Also, if your car is wrecked, you want to be able to get another car. That's why we have the comprehensive and the collision. If someone hits you, you don't need collision. That's their fault, like we addressed earlier. So they need to pay for your new car with the property damage part of their insurance. If they have not enough, then that's where your underinsured motorist comes in. So talk to your insurance agent, ask a million questions. I loved answering questions because I like to share my knowledge and help people and like teach them things. So I always loved telling all about different insurance coverages. One thing to think about is get a dash cam. I want one and I haven't gotten one for two years. I've wanted one for two years and just haven't done it. We had an insured at a red light and the car in front of him backed into him to change lanes and hit his car. People get rear-ended at stoplights all the time. So if someone backs into you at a stoplight and then says you rear-ended them, who are the cops going to believe? What happens more often? People just randomly backing into people at red lights or people getting rear-ended? Like why would someone put their car in reverse to change a lane? It just makes no sense. But it's his word against the other guy. And thankfully, the guy that's an idiot and backed into him admitted that he did it. But if he had lied, we wouldn't have known. We probably would have had to just split the difference and make them both just pay half. If you have a dash cam, you would just be able to enter that and say, look, here's the guy backing into me. Look, here's the deer running into me. You know those weird stories that like no one would ever believe or the weird stories that are just so crazy that they'd have to be true? That's what a dash cam helps you with. Like, yeah, I hit a beaver like what the hell is a beaver doing in the road i don't know it was there some dude hit a big ass raccoon and it like totaled the entire undercarriage of his car and it was like hard to believe but there was thankfully like raccoon hair like stuck in his car like dash cams alleviate a lot of these just weird wild one-off one in a million chance things that happen that otherwise they'd still pay out but they'd be kind of like hmm then if you hit it, if you're really unlucky and hit another deer like a week later, then they'd really start to be like, okay, what's going on? Also, the insurance company doesn't owe you anything other than the contract. You pay monthly and say, hey, here's my safety net money. Please cover me if something happens. Or you pay for the whole term up front. And then they say, okay. And then you call them if something happens. If you don't pay them and your policy lapses or cancels, they don't owe you shit. You didn't pay. Too bad. So don't call them and start screaming that you didn't pay your bills and you forgot to and now you're in a car accident with no insurance. That's your fault. You're an adult. If they're a nice company or if they like you, they might help you, but they don't owe you anything. You didn't uphold your end of the agreement. Your end of the agreement was you pay them, they protect you. If you don't pay them, they don't protect you. Do you see how this works? This is very simple. If you don't go to work and your boss doesn't pay you, that's how it goes. You can't not go to work and then get mad that you didn't get paid at the same time. You weren't there. You didn't do your part. Additionally, just because you didn't have claims for 25 years doesn't mean the insurance company owes you anything. You paid them for protection for that month. Nothing happened in that month. If you paid them just in case something happened for 25 years and nothing happened for 25 years, good for you. You didn't have the hassle of a car accident or whatever. If on year 26 something happens and your rates go up because of an accident that was your fault, that's what happens. Rates go up and down every year based on how many other people are getting into car accidents. And that might piss you off, but that's how it goes. Everyone in the state pools their money to the insurance company so the insurance company has money to pay for people that are having accidents. Hello, Jack. We're talking about insurance. Do you have anything important to say? Nope. He doesn't have anything to say. So if your rates are going up and down, that's because more people are having accidents or fewer people are having accidents. It's not the insurance company's fault. So just because you don't have claims doesn't mean that they owe you anything. Some companies give you like a claim-free bonus or whatever for not having claims for a certain amount of time. 
Then if something happens to your car, then you have you can sit there and do the math. Is it more financially smart for me to keep this like discount? Or is it more financially smart for me to like have the car replaced or repaired? And you can sit there and look at what would happen. You can ask them, hey, if this discount is taken off, what do my rates go up to? And then you can just see what it would cost you to do this. These things are so simple if you just ask the right questions. Also, another thing, if you're driving like a shitty 2002 Toyota Camry, and then you get a 2020 Ford Raptor, your rates are going to go up. I don't know how people can't figure this out. If your car is nicer and newer, it's going to cost more to replace than a car that is shitty and old. If your car has backup cameras and your old car didn't, it's going to cost more to replace the bumper. If your car has like the front camera thing that like tells you if you're drifting in your lane and you rear end someone, that bumper is going to cost more. Your windshield often has to get calibrated now because of all the like sensors and shit in it. These things cost money. So cars from like 2014 onward are more expensive despite all the safety features that they have as well. Sometimes, if you're lucky, the discount that the safety features give you will offset the expense of fixing those safety features if something goes wrong, but not always. So keep that in mind. When you need to make an insurance claim, it doesn't have to be the exact second after it happens. You can get the other driver's information and then go home and then make the claim after. You don't need to like pull over and make the claim right away. You should always get a police report if you can. If the other driver is like, wow, really? You're getting a police report? Wow, what a loser. That's so lame. All I did was tap your bumper. Like, get the police report. The other guy hit your car. He doesn't really get a say in what you do to defend yourself anymore because he hit your freaking car. Defend yourself. Protect yourself. Get a police report. They matter. Police reports matter a lot. Get them. But going back, you don't need to file a claim the very second it happens. You can file it after. So get home, get your facts straight, call the insurance company. They'll tell you, you know, they'll either transfer you over to the claims department or they can just take your info right there for you. Also, if you call at 4.45 on a Friday and make a claim, don't call at 9.30 on a Monday and ask why no one's called you. There have been like 20 minutes of work time since you called in your claim. If your claim happens on a Friday and you haven't heard anything on Monday, basically zero amount of time has passed in those two events. So give it time. They'll reach out to you. We always heard, wow, my claims adjuster hasn't talked to me in four days. And it was like Friday to Tuesday. It's like, yeah, no kidding. They've only been working one day since then. So give them a break. Some insurance companies will offer you the... It's called like the accident forgiveness or like the first one's on us or like whatever, where if you have a claim that's your fault, the first one doesn't raise your rates. If you get that, you're paying more automatically. It's just a a placebo feel good thing to pay for. If you cause an accident, your rates will and should go up. That is consequences of your actions. If you do this, like, I'll just say the accident forgiveness one, because that's the one that comes into mind. If you pay for accident forgiveness, you're paying the penalty as though you caused an accident up front, even though you haven't caused an accident. And then when you do cause an accident and have that claim, they take that little check mark off your account and your rates stay the same because you were already paying more as it was. It doesn't count things like deer and getting your car stolen. It's like literally like, Wow, this is a long video. I probably have more to say. I'll be doing one for renter, home, umbrella, life, all the other crap so that we have something for, you know, our young selves to know about. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more life tips, actual just info dumps like this, and whatever else I can think of. Otherwise, be good, stay safe, and I will see you next time.